there and I go, oh, went to his mom's house. There he was. So there he was. Slowly but surely, we piece the picture together. What do you think happened? Manuel was with me on Friday. I don't know where he was on Saturday, but on Sunday he was in the bar and he took vengeance. He shot the young man that he felt like was responsible. He told me about the young man, his neighbor. He shot him, killed him. Take vengeance on him betraying him. He knew Manuel's patterns and he, he, he's sure that he betrayed him. And then what does he do? Head for home. 20 miles for home. And he rolls his truck about a mile from home. And he dies. The whole thing was settled within a half an hour. From the time the young man was killed to the time Manuel died. Half an hour. I don't know if I can take this anymore. Witnessing these deaths. People going to a Christless grave. The wages of sin is death. We're talking about physical death right now. But the terrible thing is the eternal death. And uh, quickly, let's go across and look at some of these things. The whole crea creation, the Bible says, groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Thousands of tons of animals have been slaughtered, even. Sacrifice for the sin of man. Even the pagans, I believe, today testify with their sacrifices that the wages of sin is death. They slay, the pagans will slay animals, goats, what have you. Sometimes they're, even their own children to atone for their own sins. Testifying and even adding to their sins by not accepting the only provision, the beautiful provision that we have in the last half of the verse. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. What are the witnesses? Who would be the human witnesses that the wage of sin is physical death? I believe if we could, I don't know how the judgment will be, but Christ talks about those people rising up in judgment and talking. And can you, if, if tonight we could sit in a court trial and listen to some of these friends stand up and witness that the wage of sin is death, I know that Noah's friends would be there. They'd say, we thought he was just an old fanatic. We th you know, he was totally off his rocker out here building a boat when it never rained. And find even when the door was shut. Uh, you know, your imagination, these poor folks out there laughing at this old man, but, you know, they would tell us today that the ways of sin is physical death they, and spiritual death. Sodom and Gomorrah would tell us. Those that died, that wandered around 40 years in the desert because of unbelief, they would tell you the ways of sin is death, physical death. Finally, their bodies wasted away there in the desert. There's some verses I think are really interesting. Let's read Ezekiel. Uh, 33, verse 11. What does God say? Ezekiel 33, 11. Say unto them, As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die, O house of Israel? God doesn't take pleasure in these deaths. Ezekiel 18:32. How do you like this verse? How do you interpret it? Maybe I'm looking at it wrong. I, I like this. It says, For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth. Now, if you look at some other translations or some other languages, you might, it, it, it gives me the idea. La muerte del que muere. Okay, I believe that's the same in Spanish. I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. Now that takes us to the next point. This, the physical death is a horrible thing, but the most horrible thing, I think that God is saying, I take no pleasure. We can take it this way. I think it would be scriptural to say this. I have no pleasure in the eternal death of him that dies. Um, now, that's the second point. We have spiritual death. I just simply have one... Um, Bible verse to go with that. 
I think we understand real clearly what we're saying. The Bible simply says it this way about the woman that lives in sin, the harlot. It says, but she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. We know that she's alive physically, but that just says real clear to what's really happening. He that She that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. Spiritual death now and in eternity. But if we could tonight would have time to review the emotional death of sin. We're going to the next point. Emotional death. Have you ever read the story about... Um, Tears in a bottle, tears in a bottle. I told enough stories tonight. That story touched me. Uh, in 2 Samuel 13, verse 20, let's not turn to it, but it talks about Tamar when her brother molested her. This talks about this type of thing that I want. Our, uh, the wages of sin uh, affects the person that sins, but it also affects others. In Ta Tamar, maybe that's what it's in Tamar's uh, experience, it, the Bible simply says it this way. After all of the things uh, took place, I don't care how much vengeance, I don't care if uh, Absalom avenged himself of his brother, you know. It says Tamar remained desolate in her brother Absalom's house. What we talk about when we talk about emotional death, the wages of sin is death, and emotional death is dashed dreams, dashed joys, dashed... If you want to hear a story like that, it could be a thick book if the sister would just share it. Sister uh, Arcelia. We go down there sometimes and visit with her and she starts talking about her past. And, oh, I tell you what. If we from day one would have recorded that, it would be a long book. This is a girl that at 13 was all excited about this boyfriend that she was meeting on the sly. And... Uh, she finally, out she goes, she elopes with him. You talk about a life of sorrow. She's a sister in the church today, but somehow that emotional death in her life, that and she found life now. She found life through Jesus Christ, and she's enjoying that, but she, she has stories. And one time, Brother Marion heard some of the stories, and I was interpreting, and Brother Marion told her, said, interpret this for me. He said, Sister Arcelia, you need someone to write a book. And she started crying. She says, write a book about such terrible things? Mary says, it might help somebody. Oh, no, my life was much too sad for anyone to be reading about. But she was telling the story for some reason. <clears throat> the, uh, the story about the, the bottle of tears is that very thing, uh, this, this uh, young lady that went to a little country church and was baptized. And a couple of years later, she goes to the same country church and she joins hands with the most noble young Christian man. You know, and this man, they had a happy life for a while, but this man eventually started, he just went to the bar with a friend. You know, he didn't mean anything by it, just a social drink. And then he fell and he started to, going to this bar and to make a long story short what finally happened is to, to she she uh, after she had buried her husband his physical death after her dashed dreams and all and, and and she had these children around her and she was left with nothing she says at least I have the house and the furniture and the place at least I have this maybe we can carve out a new life and I can help my girls somehow remember things they don't remember, things I remember about my husband before the clutches of alcohol come into our home. And, uh, and while she was here trying to piece her life together, here comes a messenger from the bar telling her to get out today. Why? He had played his money away. He had even, he said, I have the title for the house. The place is mine. He owes me the money. You know, and so the bottle of tears was this way. She thought she was all done shedding all her tears. She thought she didn't have a single tear left. The wages of sin had caused such emotions until she was done, but there were a few more bitter tears that uh, were wrung out. And she, she, um, these tears happened to fall on the plate there on the table, and she took these tears and dumped them into a jar, and she left it there with a, note to the bartender and as she wrote it just kind of flowed looked, and she wrote this whole thing it's a true story and I, it's quite the story she told the bartender 
the whole story.